Hi guys, I'm back with my family saga portion of my book haul. Um, I think I have one stack. There are some that would qualify. We'll get to them. I don't think that you'll be too mad at me for having them out of order. Um, we'll go ahead and say that this is a family saga. I saw one of these that was the second, and I thought, ugh, not this again. I'm the world's worst, and you'll see. The world's worst at buying books out of order and then having to go find the others. But luckily, the second day I went back, I found the first one, and I went, oh, please, please, please let those other two, because I have found two, let those other two still be there, and they were. So apparently this was a mini-series on NBC back in the day. Um, I don't even know when these were published. In the 70s but it says that it says that uh the this particular printing was the 80s so i'm wondering if the mini series was in the early 80s maybe before i was hatched but it's basically i'll just call it the beulah land series because the beulah land is the name of the family estate um which is Beulah Land, Look Away Beulah Land, and The Legacy of Beulah Land. And they are all by Lonnie Coleman. So if you like a family saga, mid-1800s, vintage AF, we have those. Um, the good old classic thorn birds. I'm going to move her lest you get angry and upset with this. Come down here. Okay. We have the Thornbirds. Read it in high school. Loved it. I had planned on rereading it, but did not get around to it or got distracted. I have this same exact copy downstairs in my storeroom. But since it was stuff a bag for $3, they all ended up being $0.15 cents a piece. Doesn't hurt to have another copy. And then we have lake in the clouds and dawn on a distant shore by excuse me sarah donati these are two and three i have to get number one i may be mistaken but there may be more than just the three but it is a family saga that starts in um the late 1700s and then works toward works through early 1800s uh, it says New York Wilderness, and this one is, sorry, same. So, same locale. Uh, this second one says, reeling from the typhoid epidemic from the previous summer. So, and they are small looking, but dense. So, they're both about 600 pages. So... The first one is on its way from Thrift Books. There are several to see that I had to buy from Thrift Books. Then we have As the Crow Flies by Jeffrey Archer. This one is a big chunk. It is 789 pages and it is East in London Family Saga around Whitechapel. Let me see when it takes place. Um, 1900 to 1970, so it spans multi-generations, and it does have a step back that's pretty. And this one is Unto a Good Land by Wilhelm M Moberg. I've never heard of this. Um, immigrant family on the great American frontier. The Nielsen family. A bold and lusty clan waiting to fight for their good land. And it has the very faded but green edges. It's not, it's like 400 pages, so it's not very long. And then we have The Beans of Egypt, Maine by Carolyn Shute. This one was very much a, this looks hilarious stuff in the bag. And I was reading it in the car when we were going to lunch the day I bought these. 
And if you've ever seen, if you haven't, hi, who are you? <laughs> no, I know people haven't. Um, have read or seen the classic Christmas movie, Christmas Story. They're talking about the Bumpus family that lives next door. The book goes more in depth on the Bumpus family than the movie. The movie's more so you just see the Bumpus hounds when they steal the, the, the Christmas turkey. Um, but this family, the Beans, reminds me of the Bumpuses. And they live in Maine and William is getting a snack. So if you hear crunching, that's what it is. Uh, the, it, it bounces back and forth, kind of the same perspective of your, your hearing about the Bumpus family, Bumpus family, the Beans, through the eyes of the neighbor. And then it goes to those in the Bean clan. Um, but I like the, the little blurbs on the back. Um, brutal, blackly comic, spectacular, uh, engrossing. Uh, it's a startling and original. They are endlessly slamming doors, dropping food in their beards, moaning, stomping, snorting, and unzipping. But they are neither villains nor buffoons. It doesn't have the best reviews on Goodreads, but I'm still, still going to consume it. Then we have Chateau Ella by Hilary Norman. And this one, sweeping saga of two generations of women, the men they loved, and the two great hotels their passion and ambition created. And it is Hungary to France and then to America. And then we have Golden Cup by Belle the Plain, which is book number two. I believe there are five or six. I at least got one and three on the way through thrift books. Um, this one, the first one is Evergreen, if you've ever heard of Evergreen. Um, three generations uh, vividly live against a background of immigrant struggle, war, and passion. Like I don't want to read the blurb because it is the second book, but Again, Family Saga, this is what the video is. Women in the Wind, gold raised lettering uh, by Margaret Ritter. This one is Oklahoma Territory, Family Saga in the early 1900s. Um, ranching, adoption, long lost love. It's got a whole bunch in it and it's pretty thick. As this is the background back. I haven't missed any any flaps, flaps, step backs. Should take up sleeping. We have Towers by Norman Stahl. If you can see, it's kind of what's the word I'm looking for? Hologram, holographic. Um, but this one is Engrossing, Mesmerizing, A Rich, Wonderful Saga That Kept Me Turning the Pages. Um, five generations of tragedy and pain. They followed their dreams to the sky. They came from the ruins of war-torn Austria, seeking new beginnings amid the squalor and savagery of 19th century New York. Um, two families. And there will be two books in my next video that are family sagas that are not in here. I'll have to go get them and add them. The only reason they aren't in here is because I was going to try to start one or the other or both. Don't get mad. Uh, this one is Angel of Light by Joyce Carol Oates. Um, this one apparently is Enter the world of infamy where one man saves another's life and clandestinely shares his wife's love. Where evil intertwines the interests of politicians, corporations, organized crime, and the purveyors of terror. And this one does have, uh, it says, Meet the Hallecks, a prestigious family part of the glittering Washington scene until Maurice Halleck died in disgrace. Now his children vow revenge. They swear to kill the betrayers, their own mother, and her lover. I mean, that step back is majestic. And I like the little cut out. And then we have A Southern Family by Gail Godwin. Um, not 
entirely sure where in the South this takes place, um, but it is the Quick family. Um, tells the story of a visit home that stirs up raw-edged emotion of an inexplicably violent death that leaves every family member forever changed, of painful confrontations that ultimately lead to healing, understanding, and lasting wisdom. And it does not have a step back. So, that is my, I believe, all of the family saga. I'll add this one as a family saga because it does say that it's the Feeney, Feeney family. But it takes place in 1875. Oh, it's Aaron's Child by, by Sheila Kelly. And it's a chunky. Um, and it's a UK copy. So it's the, the stiff pages that I actually like. I'm weird. People want their floppy books, but I like the, the stiff ones. Uh, but this one is... Apparently, a continuation of a saga, so I think it's a third, and I'm not going to go back for this one and look. I'm going to see if I can actually read it independently. Um, yeah. We'll end that here for the family saga portion of my book haul, and then we'll go on to the, I don't know, there may end up being four videos. Just bear with me. Um, the... Randoms, I'll say random mass market paperbacks. Then I have some trade paperbacks. And then I have some like westerns in a sense of like male westerns. You have the, the historical romance westerns and then you have the true what your, your dad or your grandfather read westerns. So we'll see how I ramble on the next one and talk to you then. Bye.